Well, hello guys, Mike here with Hardware Canucks, and in this video, I wanted to talk to you about a little something, and that's this guy. This is the Scythe Fuma 2, and you've probably heard me refer to it a, probably a million times by now, because over and over again, this is the heatsink that I keep on going back to. It has everything. It has price, it has performance, it's quiet, installation is a breeze. So when Scythe came to me and they said, you know what, we are actually going to be releasing a Scythe Fuma 2 Revision B, I jumped at the opportunity and I wanted to make a quick video about it. So what are the differences between the older Scythe Fuma 2 and the newer Scythe Fuma 2 Revision B? Well, if you look at them side by side, they're identical and use the exact same heatsink layout absolutely nothing's changed with the cooler itself. Scythe's approach here with the Revision B is pretty straightforward. Don't fix something that ain't broken at all. And honestly, I wish more companies lived by that simple, simple principle. The design is pretty basic too, with dual towers that are pushed a little bit forward to increase compatibility with other components on your motherboard. And let's be honest, when it comes to big coolers, motherboard compatibility is always one of the issues that we've encountered. One of the cooling towers even has a notch in it so higher motherboard VRM heatsinks shouldn't be any problem either. The result is a dual tower heatsink that has plenty of cooling mass, but also has some of the best compatibility on the market bar none. I mean, all things considered, its footprint is pretty compact for the cooling it delivers. I mean, look at it installed on a standard motherboard. The slim fan sits completely behind the memory modules, even with all four slots populated. And that notch, well, it allowed Scythe to maximize the fin area by cantilevering part of it over the motherboard's heatsink. Welcome to the light where wings fly silent and constantly impress with performance. What? The wings of the light have beautiful circular showcase. I'm just here for some fans. This diffusion is unlike anything you've seen before. I mean, I've seen RGB fans before. Yeah, but these are ARGB from Be Quiet. You're saying this is their first RGB fan. Must be good, right? We have 120s, 140s, high speed, and standard versions too. There's also the three pack with a hub. That is right. Impress your inner self with the new light wings so you can fly into the Be Quiet light wings. Check them out below. But I'm sure at this point in time, you're wondering, okay, so what exactly has changed with the Fuma 2 Revision B? And for that, I, we have to go back to the fans. Because when the original Fuma 2 was launched, it was really geared to deliver ultra low noise levels and pretty good cooling performance results. And of course, it achieved that. The only thing is that when people actually wanted to take it to the next level, sacrifice a little bit of noise to get additional performance, they had to perform a fan swap on it. So the new Revision B actually takes the original fans, throws them aside and replaces them with brand new ones. So now Scythe are using their new Kaze Flex 2 fans that run up to 1500 RPM instead of the originals 1200 RPM. But more importantly, they offer up to 50% more static pressure at a given RPM level. That extra gear for running at higher speeds is a pretty big deal for the Fuma 2, since it could potentially bring some very, very significant performance increases. Either way, the layout's still the same with a slim fan on one end to improve motherboard compatibility, along with a standard thickness fan mounted right down the middle. They actually spin in opposite directions, which is supposed to optimize static pressure even more. The other change is a lot more minor, and that's a slight change to Scythe's HPMS mounting system. Now, this is one of the best mounting systems for any cooler on the market right now, but it's been updated with LGA 1700 compatibility. And one more small thing. You see, updating the HPMS system also gave Scythe the opportunity to make a very, very small modification to their retention brackets. The update is meant to improve mounting pressure and also help you get a more consistent contact between the cooler and the CPU. It might sound so small, but believe it or not, this is probably one of the most important things that Scythe has updated here. So that's the good news, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, I have to hit you guys with a little bit of bad news, and that's the fact that Scythe is increasing the price of the Fuma 2 Revision B by a whole six bucks. Now, it's not all that much. That brings it from 60 to $66 versus the original one. But after talking to Scythe, there is something behind this. This is 110% due to what's happening in the global shipping environment. So hopefully once the prices of shipping go down, if they ever do, you'll see these basically going for the same price. So $60 and $60. But with all that being said, even at its current price, it is still one hell of a good deal. Let me explain why. I mean, sure, 
This new revision is a bit more expensive than the Mugen 5 Black I checked out a couple months ago, but when you compare it to something like the regular Noctua U12S or even the U14S, it can be a good bit less expensive, especially when you consider the Chromac versions of those coolers go for a good 10 bucks more. And it's not even close to what higher end coolers from Be Quiet and Noctua go for, especially now when some sellers are pushing those babies up to a hundred bucks and more. And unfortunately, that brings those coolers really close in line with something like a good 120 millimeter AIO. So I guess now that we know what the competition is, I wanted to do what we always do and allow you guys to replicate these results that you're about to see at home. So over here on this side of the page, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what percentage fan speed and what RPM actually equates a certain decibel reading that we got. So at least then you can go home, replicate some of these things and see if you get something close to the results that we did. So with all that being said, let's check out how this thing performed and is there any improvement of the Vision B over the original Fuma 2. And starting at 120 watt output on our CPU, I need to mention a few things you're gonna see in these graphs. First of all, they're a bit simplified with only a few coolers, since this way, they're just easier to read. Something else you'll notice here is there's gonna be a big, big gap between good coolers like the U12A and the big boys like the D15 and Dark Rock Pro 4. But here, the original Fuma 2 aligns pretty well with the U12A being either tied or a degree or two higher, but the revision B. Honestly guys, I ran these results over and over again with the same end numbers. The combination of the upgraded fans and that small mounting revision made a world of difference. Then adding in a few more coolers along with an AIO and normalizing results to 38 decibels really puts things into perspective, doesn't it? I mean, it's beating the original by a good four degrees and competes on a level four with some of the best air coolers ever created. Even that Corsair AIO, it's left in the dust. All right, so, so far, so good for the Fuma 2 Revision B. But remember, these are high-end air coolers, so we're gonna turn things up a little, little notch over here, go from 120 watt thermal output all the way up to 165 watt and see if it can still hang on. And yeah, once again, the original Fuma 2 performs pretty much identically to the U12A at 37 decibels and higher. But that revision B improves on that yet again by between two and four degrees right across the board. At this kind of wattage and at lower noise levels, it doesn't come quite as close to the big boys as it did at 120 watts, but for the price, the results are absolutely freaking incredible. And you know what? This is actually one of the first coolers that I've come across that actually provides a viable bridge between that U12A level of performance and something like the D15 or the Dark Rock Pro 4. So while the Fuma 2 was considered one of the best all-around coolers around, this new one is simply better in every way, even at this higher wattage. It goes to show that even a subtle improvement in the fans goes a hell of a long way. You also need to remember that literally every single cooler I've got here could be counted among the best of the best. So seeing the revision be this high on the chart, well, it's impressive, that's for sure. And now it's time to separate the men from the boys. And you can see how the D15 and Dark Rock Pro 4 start stretching their legs here at 260 watts, even more. To compete here, you need a ton of thermal mass. And the original Fuma 2 does struggle a bit until it hits those higher RPM levels. The Revision B doesn't really do all that much better either since Scythe hasn't redesigned its main heatsink portion. So basically, if the original Fuma 2, it was hitting a thermal capacity limitation, so too will this one. But those new fans do give it an extra gear and it ends up within a degree or two of the U12A once everything is done. But when put into a broader context at 38 decibels, the two Fumas do pretty darn good, all things considered. But I guess I also need to mention the Corsair H60i Pro is just proof of how terrible terrible 120 millimeter AIOs are at low noise levels when trying to cool hotter CPUs. Now that brings me to the conclusion and I went into this quick little video with one simple question. Is the revision B enough of a change to the original Fuma to make it worthwhile? And the answer to that is hell yes. Sure, it costs about $6 more, but it combines all of the great elements 
from the original Fuma 2 and makes it all so much better. The mounting system is still one of the best. It's still one of the quietest coolers. It's got that extra gear if you need a little bit more performance. Its compatibility is amazing. It is the full package. And when you compare it to a lot of the other coolers that I had in the charts, it's just a superior product for the price. But I know that there's probably some other coolers out there that might compete with this on a price to performance ratio. I just haven't found them yet. So I'm putting it out to you guys. If you guys want me to test something that could compete with this thing on a price to performance level, in the comments below guys, you got to give me some feedback. So I'm gonna be waiting for that. I will see you in the next one and have a great day everybody.